بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف وجعلنا من أعوانه وأنصاره اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الفهم وأكرمني من نور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزائن علومك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحم We have توفيق to continue our study of Zad al-Sadiq by the late Mullah Muhsin Faith Kashani Rahmatullah alayh after his general remarks about a spiritual journey and the way he compared it with physical journey and the requirements of this journey he started giving us a list of 25 uh, instructions and alhamdulillah we already I studied 16 of them. I quickly review what we discussed so far so that inshallah it remains more in our mind and settles. So the first was to be very careful about our uh, daily prayers, the obligatory ones, to say them on time in Jama'ah as much as possible properly. The second was particular emphasis on Salatul Jum'ah and Eidain. The third was emphasis on daily Nawafil, daily recommended prayers. The fourth was emphasis on fasting in the month of Ramadan. And the fifth was emphasis on recommended fasting, for example, three days every month. The sixth was to be careful about having a fixed measure in our money, in our income for the needy people, for charity. So, of course, Six could be zakat and seven would be ch uh, recommended or voluntary charity. Zakat is wajib, but Quran says mu'minin are those who that fi amwalihim haqqun ma'lum lis-sa'il wal mahrum and Mullah Mohsen says this is different according to hadith, this is different from zakat, it's an in addition to zakat. Then eight was about Hajjatul Islam. Whoever is mustatim must bring Hajjatul Islam. Nine, Ziyara of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Imams Alayhi Wasallam. And we talked about significance of Ziyara, especially Ziyara of Abu Abdullah Alayhi Wasallam. Ten, to be careful about the rights of brothers and sisters in faith and uh, helping them with their hajat, with their needs and requests. Eleven was to sort out anything f might have been missed from previous ones. Uh, according to sh shari rules, some have qadha, some have ada, some may not have no way, so we have to ask for forgiveness. There are different ways. Twelve, to remove bad traits of character uh, uh, through riyadha or mudadda. If you remember, we said he recommends two ways. Of course, it's not limited to this. We discussed about this. One was by self-discipline and self-training, and one was to by doing the opposite. And obtaining virtuous traits of character. Thirteen was to stop all prohibited acts. And if God for, forbid, rarely some sin happens, rarely, 
uh, do Toba quickly and try to fix it as soon as possible. Number 14 was to avoid dubious cases, shubahat, things that are not 100% known to be haram, but they are not also not 100% not known to be halal. So we have to be careful. We talked about this. 15 was not to get into malayani. What doesn't matter to us? What is not really our business? What is not necessary for us to talk about it, to know about it, to discuss it? Save time and energy for more important things. 16 was to reduce eating, talking, and sleeping. To the extent that you need not less than your body needs or less than you know your communications with people need but keep it to the necessary and beneficial limit so these are 16 things that alhamdulillah we studied in the last two sessions now we continue with 17 number 17 is to recite every day some passages of the Quran and as average the minimum is 50 ayah 50 ayah because it is recommended in hadith for example we have hadith from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam which says Al-Quran Ahdullah ala khalqih فَقَدْ يَنْبَغِي لِلْمَرْءِ الْمُسْلِمِ أَنْ يَنْظُرَ فِي عَهْدِهِ وَأَنْ يَقْرَأَ مِنْ فِي كُلِّ يَوْمٍ خَمْسِينَ آيَةٍ Quran is a covenant that Allah has for his people. So every Muslim is expected to read, to look into this, to read it and 50 ayah every day is expected, it's the minimum expectation, 50 ayah every day. Of course, maybe, for example, someone says, uh, I, for example, you know, read uh, some short surahs on, with short ayahs, and I have done my 50 ayah. Yes, uh, literally this has been done, but it's better if we review the whole Quran, not only read 50 ayah of uh, chapter, uh, for example, waqia or etc. These are very good to be re recited, but daily review from beginning to the end, as we say, you know, khatmul Quran, this is also very beneficial. Uh, but at least 50 ayah from wherever one can is not to be missed. Then Mullah Muhsin Faith Rahmatullah says this recitation should be with tadabbur, with reflection, with contemplation, wa khudu, tadabbur, wa ta'amul, wa khudu to ponder, to reflect, and with humbleness. Because if we are not humble, we are not going to benefit. We need to be opening our heart with humility. Arrogant hearts are sealed. Humble hearts are very open. Then people are in between being 100% closed or very open. Sometimes there is little opening, sometimes there is more opening, sometimes quite open. So, humility is also very important. And if you can also recite some of this daily reading in your Salat. For example, in Salat Wajib or Salat Nafile, recite some surahs. For example, if in uh, many people, for example, in uh, the Nawafil, for example, in 
Wutaira after Isha, they recite Surah Al Waqa'a. Okay, this is very good. But you can recite other surahs so that uh, you use different surahs in your salat apart from those surahs which have sajda uh, wajibe. You can read this surah in your salat and this is even better. 18 of course I am not uh, taking uh, time to expand more because these are things that uh, are discussed in other places and we don't need to go into lots of details I think these are things that we all know otherwise for example in the book lessons on knowing the Quran in the lecture series on Quranic sciences or in Arabic right now we are talking about Asrar Al-Adab Al-Asrar Al-Ma'nawiyya Al-Qira'at Al-Quran from Jammu Sa'ada so if someone wants to go into details can refer to these lectures in English Arabic inshallah uh, so I keep it very brief 18 we need in addition to Salat and recitation of the Quran which are two important ways of Dhikr and remembrance of Allah Aqim is Salat al dhikri Quran is also Dhikr by itself and reading Quran is Dhikr in addition to this we need also to gain some light and energy from some invocations especially if you can make them your word qadri az azkar wa da'awat word khud sakhtan dar awqat muayyane word here means uh, when you choose a regular pattern of an invocation a regular pattern of an invocation maybe for a week maybe for 40 days maybe for a year maybe for whole your life sometimes you choose a word for whole your life sometimes maybe for some time but it's not just one day word has to be a pattern which is regular and it's repeated for example after Salat, he especially recommends after Wajibat, Fara'id, like after Salat of Fajr, after Salat of Dhur, Salat of Asr. If you can say certain dhikr or read certain dua, but regularly. For example, you want to say 100 times Salawat. Alhamdulillah, many people do Tasbih of Lady Fatima. That's great. That's mashallah, very great. We should not underestimate this tasbih but in addition to that I don't know 70 times istighfar for example maybe you do maybe you do some salawat some tasbih and then throughout the day as much as possible to be busy with dhikr in particular he f starts with Dhikr Dhabani or Lisani in Arabic we say so you know verbal Dhikr invocation but then if it can be accompanied by Dhikr Qalbi or invocation by heart then it would be very good why he emphasizes on Dhikr Zabani because this verbal Dhikr is bringing uh, discipline is bringing attention and if you keep just in your heart then you may forget you may get into other things but when your tongue is busy hopefully then you don't get engaged in other things but it should not become a robotic action it should be with understanding so he says qadri as azkar و دعوات ورد خود ساختن در اوقات معینه 
خصوصا بعد از نمازهای فریزه to make some of the invocations and prayers supplications his or her own word و جعل اورادی کلها وردن واحدا we have in the this term word of course over there it means that I want all these patterns of remembrance that I have to be under one general remembrance so it means that all parts of my life are connected and are forming a life which is dedicated to remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa hali fi khidmatika sarmata and I want to be eternally at your service especially in some uh, fixed times especially after faraz but it can be other times sometimes also can be uh, for example weekly for example Tuesday night you want to do du'a tawassul Thursday night du'a kumil Friday for example morning du'a nutba this is also pattern which is repeated and if he can or she can most of the time aksar awqat most of the time make his tongue or her tongue busy with it that's very good even if you are busy with other things for example you are washing you are cooking you are driving you are walking if you are able to do these tasks with saying something with your tongue as well that would be great then there is a hadith here from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says وَكَانَ abi كَثِيرَ dhikr my father was someone who was busy always with dhikr اُذْكُرُ اللَّهِ ذِكْرًا so he was kathir, his zikr was abundant. لَقَدْ كُنْتُ أَمْشِي مَعَهُ وَإِنَّهُ لَيَذْكُرُ اللَّهِ I was walking with him and he was invocating Allah. وَآكُلُ مَعَهُ الطَّعَامِ وَإِنَّهُ لَيَذْكُرُ اللَّهِ I was eating food with him, he was remembering and invocating Allah. وَلَقَدْ كَانَ يُحَدِّثُ الْقَوْمِ وَمَا يَشْغُلُهُ ذَلِكَ عَنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ Even when he was talking to people, this was not stopping him from remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَكُنْتُ أَرَارْ لِسَانَهُ لَازِقًا بِحَنَكِهِ يَقُولُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ He says, I was seeing that his tongue is uh, attached to his hanak to you know uh, inside it, uh, the mouth with la ilaha illallah la ilaha illallah is a zikr which is uh, possible to be said with the minimum uh, movement of the tongue and lips and uh, even very quietly can be said la ilaha illallah it's a special zikr which is very easy to repeat and it's great in sawab and benefit so Imam Baqir alayhi salam talking to people eating food walking was not stopping him from zikr and it seems that zikr was also zikr lafzi not just qalbi Qalbi is very important, but if it can be with engagement of tongue, would be great. Of course, we have to be careful about sensitivities of the context, so uh, we don't want to offend anyone, we don't want also to draw attention of people and you know, show off na'uzubillah. So you have to learn how to do it between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number 19, it's very important. And maybe it is underestimated often, unless a person who is deeply rooted in 
teachings of Ahlul Bayt can understand this. Sohbat alim va sual az u va istifade ulum diniye be qadr hausle khud. Sohbat here means company. To accompany alim and ask him questions and benefit from his knowledge in religious sciences as much as you can as much as you have capacity you have time you should keep learning and benefiting from an alim Inshallah, we will talk about when you don't have access to alim. But first, priority is you need to find ulama and learn from them as much as possible. There is a hadith here which is available in Amali of Shaykh Saduq. Akiyasun nas man jama nas ila ilmi. The most intelligent and clever people are those that add knowledge of people to their knowledge. Someone has studied tens of years. Why I should not benefit from his knowledge, his experiences, his advice? And if it is Alam Rabbani, even from looking at him from, you know, seeing him hearing him i can understand and benefit you know unfortunately sometimes people even in our community don't know the value of listening and meeting ulama there's a big difference between watching a lecture or listening to a lecture and then watching live in person or watching live online or watching recorded they are different the more you get to real encounter is better so if you can meet someone in person better if not live if not recorded but video if not audio and then in the, as much as possible close to reality how that person talks If someone speaks very, for example, uh, quickly or slowly, it's better as much as possible we keep it real because the way he speaks is very important. Every person has his own way of opening, his own way of communicating. So if we rush and you know, for example, a speed up, you know, two, wise, two times, three times, four times. Okay, you finish soon, okay. But it's not going to have the same impact. It's different. Yes, someone cannot do it. There's no time, there's no, I don't know, opportunity. Okay, as much as possible. But I'm saying it's very important because for us, it's not just the information that we want to extract from someone. For us, is the whole experience of encounter with people. Right now, even you know, I try to watch uh, videos of some of ulama who have passed away. In this way, I try to benefit from their light even after their death. I think it's very good for me. I can read sometimes their books. Yes, that's good. But I want sometimes to watch their video. I want to listen to them. I want to feel them. It's very important. So, he says, Sohbat a'alam az khudra fawzi azim shumurat. To be in company of someone who is more knowledgeable than himself, should be considered as great foes, great achievement.
و از حکم او بیرون نرود and try not to differ from him and disagree or you know disobey him and he says in Sufi traditions you know they talk about peer peer uh, literally means old person but they mean a sage sometimes they say peer sometimes they say murad sometimes they say qutb they have different terms but the same concept is there of course some of them are not very careful the concept is nice concept but sometimes for example someone inherits this position from his father in some you know, orders and maybe this son is not that much a spiritual like father for example uh, sometimes you know they you know it be has become like a official position but the real concept which many people have, of course many Sufis alhamdulillah observe uh, is that we need a person that has spent his life in remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and has reached certain level of uh, nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that he can um, put us in touch with that tradition so that's our meeting point with our tradition with our previous masters if they do it properly it's very valuable for us this is our godly scholars ulama rabbani but even if we don't have access to ulama rabbani at least we benefit from people who are somehow in the same line in much maybe lesser degrees even but more knowledgeable than me then he says when we say knowledge we mean knowledge about the hereafter not knowledge about dunya that's another thing if you want to learn any secular subject okay you go to someone who is more knowledgeable than you and you learn but what we are talking about here that is a great achievement and a great need is to learn anything that helps us in our journey towards Allah in the next life if you don't find such people you don't find an alim and you don't find even people who is at least more knowledgeable than you who can share with you something that you don't know then choose books as your companion ba kitab sohbat darat means he must have musahaba companionship with books books of these scholars if we don't have these scholars available we benefit from their books this is different from mubahasa because mubahasa can be someone at your level and it's great and we always emphasize emphasize on mubahasa but this is someone that can teach you so either an alim or someone who is more knowledgeable than you or at least their books if you don't have enough time with ulama they are not available for example a lot you can mix meeting and reading books or watching lectures etc and also company company of people who have good akhlaq maybe they are not able to teach you that much but there are people that even maybe at your level of knowledge or less than your knowledge but their akhlaq is very good you can benefit from their good traits of character and then he says look at this as a practical tip har sohbati که او را خوش وقت و متذکر حق و نشأت آخرت می سازد از دست ندهد Any company, any meeting that makes you feel more spiritual more mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more thinking, more concerned about آخرت don't miss it if there is any meeting 
with a person or with a group of people that when you are with them or with that person or that group you feel more spiritual don't miss this of course this is when those people have iman and you know right aqidah because sometimes people you know for example go to some people some gathering they feel very spiritual but that those people maybe their aqidah their practices are not correct yes they do something some exercises or some you know reputation of dhikr etc you feel spiritual we are not talking about those things we are talking about people who are um, free from problems in their aqidah in their practices they are mu'minin performing their wajibat avoiding haram following marajah respecting ulama they are proper muslim muslima and when brothers meet brothers or sisters meet sisters or there are you know family gathering etc they read quran they read dua they reflect they talk they discuss you feel good in the mosque especially in the centers or smaller gatherings we should not miss these things these are very important there are lots of benefits in these gatherings according to the hadith of Ahlul Bayt in these such majalis that make hearts of Imams happy and also there are lots of uh, risks if people isolate themselves if you isolate yourself and you want to be doing your spirituality alone there are risks you need to find a balance I'm not saying do everything in groups in gatherings but don't separate yourself that much from community this is not good for your mental health for your spirituality and it is very risky number 20 a wayfarer is very attached to his journey his task as a servant of Allah but at the same time must be very good in his or her akhlaq good temper is needed in Islamic spirituality when you get closer to Allah you become more humble and more kind towards people if you feel you are better than people you become careless about people if you think you are you know to do more important thing that, than doing my you know routine for example Quran etc and don't bother about people who are around you and need you and suffer this is not working this is not Islamic spirituality yes you have to find some time to be alone some time to do your amal to your zikr you have to find but you should not do it by sacrificing needs of people around or showing love to the people around so number 20 is good temper and to be showing joy mubasata to have pastol watch with people that you meet so that no one feels bad or feels you know uncomfortable when you are there or feel you know they cannot talk to you they cannot approach you because you are very spiritual for it no they should feel very comfortable with you and if they do something bad or if they appear to do or say something bad you should have husnudhan good opinion about them it's very important to have good opinion about people we have discussed this in some lectures but especially about husnul you know, in Hosea series but I thought it's good to remind ourselves of some hadith and inshallah the barak of these words 
help us in our inshallah uh, journey about hostul khulq i am reading some hadith from muntakhabu mizan al hikma a selection of mizan al which translates a scale of wisdom also rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam is quoted as saying husnul khulq nisfuddin shaykh sadu in as in his al khisal reports this husnul khulq nisfuddin half of your faith is husnul khulq amir al mu'min alayhi salam in a hadith which is cited in Ghurarul Hikam says Husnul Khulq Ra'asu Kulle Bir is the foundation for every goodness Husnul good, having good temper One more hadith, because there are many hadiths, but one more hadith, which is here in Muntakhab Mizan al from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Inna al-abda layablughu bi husn khulqihi azim darajat al-akhirah wa sharaf al-manazil wa innahu ladha'if al-ibadah. Sometimes a servant of Allah who has not that strong way of ibadah, his ibadat are not many. He's not doing lots of nawafil, lots of ziyar, lots of fasting. Doing wajibat a little more than wajibat and has good akhlaq. Then this person with this good akhlaq and having taqwa. Not lots of ibadah, but has taqwa, has wajibat, avoids haram. With this husnul khulq, can have very high position in the hereafter. Adhimu darajat al reaches great ranks of the hereafter. Vasharaf al manal, very honorable position. We should do mustahabat as much as possible. But if doing mustahabbat is going to make you uh, someone who's asab, you know, who's, you know, mm, nerves, you know, are getting, you know, upset and becomes, you know, impatient with people, no. You need to be careful about your way of treating people. You uh, should not get angry with people because you are fasting, for example, mustahab fasting or you know, you do Salatul Layl and Ibadah in the night during the day, then you are sleepy and, you know, you cannot do your Taqal Wajibat or you are not in a good, with a good mood. So you have to try to have all these things in a balanced way. And Husnul Khulq is something which is very important and we should not compromise. And you remember the Hadith about the pressure of grave caused by Su al Khulq. The next uh, thing that I want to share some hadith about husnul dhan. To have good opinion about people and as much as possible. Sometimes, of course, you need to take uh, some uh, precautionary uh, measures. You have to be muhtat, but not to be suspicious. Unless there's a history. You know, if there are mischief makers, okay, we need to be suspicious. But with mu'mineen, we should have good opinion as much as possible. Try to interpret what they say and what do in a good way. So, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Utlub la'akhika udra. فَإِنْ لَمْ تَجِدْ لَهُ عُذْرًا فَالْتَمِسْ لَهُ عُذْرًا In Amali of Shaykh al Try to 
find for your brother an excuse otlop seek an excuse for example you were ill he or she didn't come to visit you for example okay say maybe he didn't know maybe he had some emergency find an excuse and even if you don't find excuse <laughs> look for excuse sometimes you know that there is such possibility sometimes you don't know or you know that there was no such a thing but try to find something try to say because we are not aware of people's circumstances some people quickly say i know you know he didn't want to come he didn't bother about me why you rush try to look for some excuses even if it is difficult amir al mumin alayhi salam said sorry the hadith uh, from rasulullah was from biharul anwar this is from amali of sheikh sadu amir al mumin is from amali ذع امر اخيك على احسنه حتى ياتيك منه ما يغلبك till you receive an evidence that then you cannot do anything <laughs> before that put what your brother in faith does in the best possible way give the best interpretation to what your brother does wala tadhunna bi kalimatin kharajat min akhika su'a wa anta tajid laha fil khayr mahmila as long as you can find a good interpretation never think about what your brother has said in a negative way always try to have good opinion as much as possible even sometimes you may think you are deceiving yourself you know you are sometimes you know you say you know you know i am uh, you know for example uh, you know sure for example you know why i am you know uh, for example you know closing my eyes to no these are should be ignored this is a noble trait of character that you try to have good opinion about people even if the chance is low is very low you should have good opinion about them and even if it is proved what are you going to do again a mu'min if it is proved that someone said something bad to him and meant it a mu'min is not going to react you know you have to be halim إذا خاتبهم الجاهلون قالوا السلام. We should learn from Malik Ashtar that when someone insulted him, went to the masjid and prayed for him. So even if it is proved that someone has said something bad about me, or you know didn't really didn't bother about me when I was ill, for example, or when I was in need, we are not going to take it seriously. We should be still very kind, very nice, very welcoming. It's akhlaq of mu'min. But even before reaching this point, as much as possible, try to be positive in your opinion about people. Have good opinion. Because you have such you know, purity and kind akhlaq and character that it's very difficult for you to become negative about people and we have here hadith that those who are sh you know very bad and vicious they always think about other people in a vicious way but if you are very good you try to think naturally actually but if you are not doing this naturally at least learn to have good opinion about people Okay, inshallah, we will continue this uh, beautiful book by the late Mullah Mohsen of Eid, inshallah, in next week, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ahli Muhammad.
May Allah bless you, inshallah. If there are any questions, any points. Brothers and sisters, you're welcome to unmute and ask your question. Assalamu alaikum, Shaykh. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. How are you, Allah? Alhamdulillah, how are you, sister? Alhamdulillah, Shaykh. May Allah bless you. Fantastic, very blessed lecture. Um, I just wanted to um, understand, uh, so when we try to be Haleem, yes. uh, move towards the direction of um, having an extremely good opinion and um, completely like overlooking, um, and then as you said at times, um, in official matters, if it comes to life, that somebody has obviously uh, crossed the red line or um, could you advise us I mean how should we um, because as as members of our community of believers uh, in in our inner circle we could perhaps you know accommodate each other but then when you have like an outsider um, sort of evaluating our kind of um, staff members or um, what's the best way forward? <laughs> because you would like to be like very, very uh, accommodating, and mm -hmm. but then you may be being evaluated uh, mm -hmm. um, as an institution. Yes, so yes. The best way forward. Yeah, it's a very important question. You know, it's very difficult to be both a good manager and a moral and a spiritual manager. It's, mm -hmm. it's very difficult, but this is because it's very great. People sometimes um, prioritize, or most of the time they prioritize the success of that project or business or company or institution over akhlaq, the compromise about akhlaq. Rarely you find people that know that for them akhlaq and spirituality are very important and they prioritize it over uh, efficiency and more rarely you find people who can do justice to both mm. it's very rare because it's very difficult because when if when you are dealing with people and you know there are lots of different you know types of people and you want also to grow these people you feel these people are like part of your family, you want to grow them. Some of them may take advantage. Some of them have shortcomings. On the other hand, this institution has to grow, has to reach its aims. Uh, so there are lots of factors. Is it uh, your personal you know, institute? Is it something that someone has asked you to look after? Then you have to be answerable to them. What rights are involved? It's very complicated. In uh, the course Islamic Theory of Management, uh, I try to address this issue to some extent. Uh, we had this, uh, it's online, Islamic theory of management. But anyway, this is a way for us to grow. We should not become indifferent about shortcomings of people, colleagues, but as a caring uh, person we should try to see how we can push them towards uh, you know the expectations which are ob objective I don't want to promote myself I don't want I'm not after name I don't want you know to increase my salary uh, no but it's a great task or I am responsible I have to make this function this be efficient this grow and at the same time we have these problems sometimes also you may need to make hard decisions sometimes you may need to you know for example ask some people to leave etc uh, so it's very complicated but very blessed to have such managers thank you Shane. may Allah bless you Thank you. you know, in such cases, it's very difficult to give one clear answer. You have to reach that level of taqwa and practical wisdom and, you know, struggle and learn and, you know, consult so that then you know how to deal with every person, every case. 
but it's, a, it's very nice. Yeah, it's a yeah, sure. Bi- it's a big challenge. <laughs> Thank you. May Allah bless you. May Allah bless you, inshallah. You know, most of my beard became white just over a year after some position. <laughs> after a year, my beard became. True. Well. True. May Allah bless you, inshallah. Very blessful and very insightful. Thank you. Jazakumullah khair. Please pray for us. No more questions have been written in the chat. Okay. So maybe, so maybe we can end with Dua Farad, inshallah. Sure. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad. Allahumma kulli waliyika al-Hujjat ibn al-Hassan salawatuka alayhi wa ala abaih. Fi hadhi sa'at wa fi kulli sa'at. Waliyan wa hafidhan wa qa'adhan wa nasira. Wa dalilan wa ayna hatta tuskinahu ardaka tawa wa tumatta'ahu fiha tabilah. وامن علينا برضاه وهب لنا رأفته ورحمته ودعاه وخيره اللهم اشف مرضانا اللهم ارحم موتانا اللهم اقض حوائجنا اللهم اغننا من الفقر اللهم ادع عنا الدين برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين التماس دعاء بليس السلام عليكم عليكم السلام في امان خدا حافظ